Hello, welcome to a Prehistory Guys Prehistory Flash short live shows where we review recent news from prehistoric archaeology that's taken our eye. I'm Michael Bott. And I'm Rupert Soskin. Welcome. And today um, we're bringing you news of the discovery of a hugely important Neolithic monument. Monument, those words I speak, or that word I speak, <laughs> in inverted yeah. commas. We'll maybe talk about uh, the reasons why ch we choose that later on. Um, but this is on the Isle of Arran, on the west coast of Scotland. However, before we get into that, if you haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe button down below. That really helps the channel. And if you've got a moment, like to help us a bit more, there's a link to our Patreon crowdfunding page down in the description. Right, that's done. Happy to see you lot. Lots of fresh faces and old faces. Old faces? What am I talking about? Old faces. That's not what you meant. That's, <laughs> That's not what I meant. Old friends. Old friends. <laughs> friends. Old friends. Old friends. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, a new cursus and on Aaron. Rupert, why is this important? <laughs> Why is it important? Well, not least of all, because it is the only one they've ever found on Aaron. Um, it's a remarkable discovery. Uh, you know, yeah. curses, it's, it's amazing how we like to call them curses. Is. People call them curses because curses is one of those words that's a singular and a plural. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, whether you want to call them curses monument or not, they are hugely important Neolithic structures. Um, hmm. Essentially rectangular, long, narrow rectangles uh, of all very enormously uh, varied sizes. Some of them, I think the shortest is something like 80 metres long, something shorter than yeah. that maybe. Yeah. Um, longest one, um, how long's, um, how long's uh, the Dorset Cursus? Six miles. Off the top of your head? It's six, six miles, miles, something. It's enormous. Yeah, yeah, enormous. it's crazy. Um, and... <clears throat> um, uh, they are uh, historically they have been said to be processionary pathways which <laughs> michael and i make no bones about the fact that we think that's preposterous nonsense uh, yeah. um uh but uh, it's uh, there's various reasons why this is important on Aaron. so as i said not least of all because it is the only one that has ever been discovered on Aaron. yeah uh, and it came out of the uh, the fairly recent lidar scanning of um uh, of the island where they found so many thousands of uh, previously unknown archaeological uh, remains in the landscape um yeah what well, historic environment Scotland unusual? have been doing a uh, historic environment Scotland have been doing a number on uh, on on Aaron over the past uh, mm. uh, few years. It's quite extraordinary. I mean, the main thing about a curses is, to, to, to my mind, uh, parallel lines of a bank and ditch, and that's it. You, often with a you know mm. a terminus, a curved uh, terminus end or a box uh, box end. Yeah. Uh, well, in fact, if you if you look at particularly the Scottish. Uh, examples, then there are a number of different uh, shaped terminals, uh, yeah. which very probably relate to the the topography. But but mm, that mm. was what I was just going to say was what makes this one quite uh, unique so far is that there's no evidence for ditches. Uh, the the bank that they've found is uh, is very low. Uh, mm. So it's only uh, about uh, a third of a meter. They're saying so a foot high. It kind um, of it, it kind of completes the set, though, doesn't it, for Aaron? Because it's got <laughs> so much uh -huh. uh, in terms of uh, prehistoric archaeology, and mm. uh, even David Cowley and you know, Aaron here. Aaron, yes. Yeah. Did I say something else? No, no, no. It's just you. You didn't specify Aaron, so I didn't know. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Or, <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't have put it past yeah. me, you know, <laughs> talking about somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, no, no. I mean, like I said, it completes the set. David Cowley, I think, you know, is the lead guy uh, on this. It was the last thing we expected to to find because they're scarce on that side of Scotland. The nearest one, mm. I'll tell you, look, let's sh show where we are, are we? There we are, uh, up off the west coast of Scotland and... Yeah. to zoom in a bit more that's the actual island and you'll notice there macri moor standing stones are the most famous yeah. site uh, on the island picked out uh, there but there's masses of stuff 
there. You know, mm. cairns and, and, and uh, chambered tombs and standing stones and hut circles and stuff. And now the curses. And it's rare. The nearest one is in um, uh, Kilmartin Glen. I do yes. believe over this side of Scotland, you know, so it, it is, really uh, is I think that's the only one just uh, adding adding to the conversation hugely uh, over yeah. here. How many um, d just to get a sense of perspective, um, I mm. think uh, the latest count was about there are a total 70 curse sissies in Scotland. <laughs> uh, is that the latest count for Scotland? OK, yeah, that's I'll, the approximate uh, number I that um, Okay. Yeah, I'm, was, uh, I'm my my last uh, thing was actually on the back of uh, uh, Kenny Brophy's uh, paper that's uh, that's a, a while ago now, and I think he'd counted sixty. So uh, so yeah, oh, seventy right. would make sense uh, now because uh, yeah, yeah. he wrote that some time ago. Now, Mandy's correct. Um, uh, Kilmartin is not that far from uh, Aaron as the crow flies. No, indeed, yeah. it's not. No, it's yeah, yeah. Uh, al almost swimmable. One of our favourite places, uh, Kilmartin Glen. And I bet if we went to Aaron, which we made a strategic decision not to visit when making Standing with Stones, I think uh, Aaron <laughs> would probably become uh, uh, quite popular with us to, <laughs> if we ever get there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, back to curses. Yeah. Uh, should we just talk a little bit why we it's don't... It's not curse -I. Yes, it's actually not curse -I. Uh, No, <laughs> technically, that's, that's right. No, it's not, it's not Brian. Yeah. It's, uh, it is curses. Um, or, but curses why we... or curses like sheep and sheep. You don't say sheeps. Um... But, uh, correct. Um, but within the archaeological uh, community, they are almost invariably referred to as curses monuments. And we prefer not to say that. Um, Shall we discuss why we prefer not to say that? Well, yeah, well, maybe we should. I, I, it's all, although, <laughs> although it's not news per se. But mm. the, the thing is that we think that so many of these sites that are, uh, you know, the, they are they're classified as ceremonial and ritual and what have you, and and things mm. that if you're making a monument. You are monumentalizing something. You're making a monument to something. Um, and we think these are extremely practical. Mm, uh, mm. Uh, you know, they had a very practical function. And so to call them a monument is, is in itself is misleading. If you call something a monument, you're trying to give it meaning. Mm. It's, it's because that place, that thing, that statue, that building has meaning other than its functional purpose. I think that's the, the distinction in my mind. But if you mm. continue to uh, insist on using the term monument, then it, it stops you from thinking about the practical possibilities of what they might, mm. uh, might have been for. That's our reasoning uh, for not, um, not using the word monument. There, we, we have it. And, you know, go on, Rupert, sorry. Yeah, that's all right. I was just going to, just going to say, you know, if, if it if it adds any weight to, you know, why we would say that these aren't monuments is that if they were, for example, you know, the, the, the traditional interpretation of these um, structures is that they were processionary pathways. Now, if they were processionary pathways, then you would think that at the end of every single one of them, there would be a stone circle or a hinge or a whatever, but mm. there isn't. You know, in the main, they just have different shaped terminals. They can be square cut, rounded off. Some of them are quite complicated shapes. And sometimes uh, things have been added in later years, you know, burials and... Uh, yeah, and in fact, like some of the ones yeah. that have cairns incorporated within them, the cairns are, come from a, a vastly different period from when the actual... Um, curses itself was uh, was constructed, so you know mm, it's mm. Um, it, it's a red herring. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Um, no, um, and uh, a book Davies says uh, curses equal equals course. Yes, that's how Stukeley originally named them. He, yes. wrote, he, he all mistook all them. Stukeley's fault. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, we'd love it if they were athletics tracks, but um, 
<laughs> it doesn't seem to. Think. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, we will expound upon this further and further and further as the weeks, months, years go on, Rupert and I. But uh, mm. we believe that they're far more to do with animal man management, trapping, and, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're to do with the practical things of farming and hunting and, yeah, ag agricultural mm. film. Um, it, 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 that's yeah, what which makes it, which sense entirely to us. explains why they are uh, such a variety of lengths. Um, yeah, you know that you you can't even say what's the average length. There isn't one. They're all over the place. You know, as I said, yeah, from, uh, if you take hundred meters to miles, it's yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the fact that you get duplication of them within the same area. I can walk. I tell you what, I can walk out my back door, and within three miles, uh, I. In a three-mile radius round here, I think there are five or six curses. Uh, mm. <laughs> so many. Anyway, we we will get bogged down in our in our reasoning. I don't think that's uh, you know for a bigger yeah. programs uh, later on down the down the road. I just want to should we talk about a lidar for a bit? Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> LIDAR, uh, the laser imaging technique uh, uh, flown in an airplane and it enables us to get uh, three-dimensional images from the ground even if there are trees covering. So this has been revolutionary as far as discovering ancient uh, sites is concerned and the LIDAR image uh, concerning this one, this is what we're shown. Um, uh, so far now <laughs> see that great strip down the middle it ain't that it's not that <laughs> <We> one can, <laughs> no it's the sort of parallel squiggly lines to the right kind of begs the yeah, question you can see, what you can the, see big... the red arrow there that's just yeah. um, uh, grazing the right hand uh, edge of one yeah and it begs the question um, you know, what, what are those straight lines to to the left that's not mentioned at all in the archaeological on the in in the field report that archaeological no, report there is not on, one because uh, nobody's done any digging yet have a look because i'm not sure what that is either yeah um mm. but that same area oblique uh, angle um the straight narrow bits that you saw in the last picture they line up exactly with the rectangular plantation or sort of long rectangular plantation that you can see up just to the right there and the cursor's monument which you can't see any evidence of from this uh, aerial shot um, is just to the right of that and it sort of transects where that little stream i think it's a little stream Wiggly yeah. stream. There is a hint uh, of it. You can, you there's can a hint, of, a hint it, yeah. of it if you know what you're looking for. But, yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, it is very. But we're talking subtle. about those sort of vaguely squiggly lines, um, mm. and they stretch for 1.1 kilometres uh, in yeah. in that area. Yeah. yeah, and it has to be said, you know, not far from uh, that spot. If you look on Ordnance Survey maps, there's plenty of hut circles, and mm. it's barely a mile from. Machri, Moor, um, stone, um, yeah, the monuments yeah, there. Moore, stone circles Ma and Moore standing stones too. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mm. Sorry, not that one. This one. No, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> uh, this is what I meant to show you. Yeah, well it's less than a mile for, from, uh, from these on the... Uh, mm. And that gives that to. They look like the uh, devil's arrows up devil's in nature. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, 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 they do. So that sandstone that sort of seems to weather at the top, like, like yeah. that. So one standing stone, and you see this circle uh, more than just behind there. Yeah. Uh, anyway, got to that photograph. Um, but, anything else? Um, uh, well, I, I think, uh, you know, worth uh, describing a cursus of, in, in a bit more detail, that whatever length it is, they're characterised by uh, uh, gaps every now and again. There's a gap in the, yeah. in the bank. Um, they have uh, at times been illustrated as, uh, as settlements inside them, people actually living inside them. Oh, really? Um uh, yeah, yes, they have. Um, 
but uh, you know whether that's fanciful or not. I mean, I certainly think it's more accurate than the processionary pathway. But um, uh, but the thing is, you you have these various entrances. Um, I, I mean, the fact that we're doing a news article about the discovery of one on Aaron is this is probably not the time for us to be talking about what we think they're all about, um, apart from we think they're about animal husbandry. Um, so you know the gaps, whether it's for uh, you know the, if you're chasing wild animals across a landscape, herding animals. You know, so if you're yeah, chasing yeah. deer, for example, herd yeah. deer across the landscape. Escape. They will try to escape from their uh, supposed predator by uh, by running through the gaps. If they're chased towards the banks, they will try to escape through the gaps, which means that they run through the gap and they're then enclosed within the um, yeah, uh, the yeah. structure. Um, as I said at the beginning, uh, what makes this unusual, uh, or uh, as far as I'm aware, unique, is that it has no ditch. Well, I think they'd have to do good. excavations to ascertain whether there was a, a, a ditch uh, or not. Well, I don't know if they were able that to do that. There should be some yeah. trace, but I'm I'm not actually convinced um, because it's very peaty soil there, and yeah. uh, and it's also we know <laughs> it's not the driest part of the world. Um, sure. despite, and pr despite I just the pretty think photographs. That the amount of, of of heather and everything else that I, you know, if it wasn't a uh, if it wasn't yeah, a that, that's, huge, that's them. Yeah. That is from the field report. That is uh, them yeah. actually doing the uh, doing on the ground the survey. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, uh, I, I think it would be quite difficult to find uh, signs of bank, unless, as you say, unless they yeah. actually uh, get shovels in the ground. And well, the, the bank, uh, you know, it's not continuous. Whether it's broken down or worn out or been not ploughed, because. I don't think that's ever been a field, has it? By the looks of it. <clears throat> yeah. um, um, although, as a plantation, they must have done yeah. some pretty horrendous. Uh, yeah. Horrendous. That's not fair. Despite, they must have done some pretty severe work. Despite the lidar, it seems to be uh, pretty continuous. For, uh, it, well, it seems to be pretty continuous in the lidar, but not so much on the ground. Mm. We need to mm. just address the reporting of this just a little bit. We don't want to get into the habit of, of you know, having to do this, but sometimes it is necessary. There is some hyperbole in the reporting of this, if anybody's gone uh -huh. round and seen. And it's hyperbole to do with processionary pathways. Um, it's being called a cathedral. It's being called, it has in the, <laughs> kid mm. you not. And of course, I don't know why, a lot of, in Scotland particularly, it seems that curses are associated also with timber, uh, whether they're posts down the uh, side of the um, uh, curses or whether they're posts associated with the, with the ends. Even though there is no evidence of any timber on this particular site, it's already been reported that they were usually timber posts and they would have been burnt down in a uh, huge, magnificent ceremony to which from mm. everybody from all over the land would have come. And thinking, <laughs> really? <laughs> How is this? Just like we yeah. keep saying, just keep it. It's the, it's yeah. the, the truth of the matter is much more interesting and gives you much more uh, scope to uh, mm. use your imagination that's it yeah we do find it very frustrating that uh, that for whatever reason people do always uh, seem to try to make things fit the narrative you know so everybody has always yeah. called them ceremonial and ritual therefore if there's signs of burning they must have burnt it down yeah. um it's uh you know our attitude generally is that if you've gone to the amount of man hours involved in cutting down enormous mature trees and shaping yeah. them into posts and sinking them deeply into the ground that even if you no longer had a use for the uh, the cursus itself uh, a, a mature tree cut into a post would last for decades before mm. it needed replacing so the notion that they burnt them down i i just what well, we think is uh, is it's just not really the sensible way of looking at it. They would have taken those posts out of the ground and used them somewhere else, split them into planks, whatever. You know, it's, it's all sorts of things that you could You'd have do thought. With, uh, 
<laughs> yeah, mm. but this, this, I, I, this is a conversation for another time because we're fast approaching Indeed. the twenty-minute mark uh, right now. Are we now. already? That's shocking. Uh, well, you and know I, I, I think judging, judging by the, um, the 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 chat, though, I think the whole subject is is fascinating to people and and how we think about them and work out. Uh, mm. what they're for. Uh, like I say, I think they have the potential to be the most illuminate, one of the most illuminating types of monuments from the Neolithic mm. about how people were living yeah. lives. But at the moment, they still seem, they are still the most enigmatic. That's my take on them anyway. Yeah. I, I okay. That's, that's perfectly fair. If, uh, if the riddle gets solved, then it will inform everything, I think. We are doing mm. our best. <laughs> yeah, we are. We are. But that's the important thing. It's the first one they've ever found on Aaron. And that is yeah. genuinely exciting, whatever they were. Guys, yeah. thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for, for watching and being uh, such a support and uh, having such a great time in the chat and being such a contribution. It's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. And we'll see you again very soon. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.